The thousands of injuries of Fortunato I had borne, I best I could. But when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed had I given Fortunato cause to doubt my good will. I continue as well as my wont to smile in his face, and he did not perceive that now my smile was at the thought of his immolation. He had a weak point, this Fortunato. Although in other regards he was a man to be respected and even feared, he prided himself upon his ability of the connoisseurs of fine wines. Few Italians have a true virtuoso spirit. I was skillful in the Italian vintages myself and bought largely when I could. It was about dusk one evening during the supreme madness of the carnival season that I encountered my friend. He accosted me with excessive warmth, for he had been drinking much. The man wore motley. He had on a tight-fitting party striped dress, and his head was surmounted by the conical cap and the bells. I was so pleased to see him that I thought I should never be done wringing his hands. And I said to him, My dear Fortunato, we are luckily met. How remarkably well you are looking today. But, but I have received a pipe of what passes for Montelato, and, and I have my doubts. How, he cried, a Montelato, a pipe, an impossible, and in the middle of carnival. I have my doubts, I replied, and I was silly enough to pay the full Montelato price without consulting you in the manner. You were not to be found, and I was fearful of losing a bargain. A Montelato? I have my doubts. A Montelato? As you are engaged, and I am on my way to Lucisa, who if anyone has critical turns, he will be the one to... Lucisa cannot tell a Montelato from Sherry. And yet some fools will have it. This is taste of a match for yours in this area. Come, come, let us go. Whither? <laughs> to, to your vault. <laughs> Thus speaking, Fortunato possessed himself of my arm, putting on a mask of black silk, and drawing a roquier around my person, I suffered him to hurry me to my own piazza. I took from the sconces two flambeaux, giving one to Fortunato, bowed him through several rooms and suites to the archway that led to the vaults. I passed down a long and winding staircase, requesting him to be cautious as he followed. We came at length to the floor, to the foot of the descent, and stood together on the damp ground of the catacombs of Montresors. The gait of my friend was unsteady, and the bells on his cap jingled as he strode. The, the, the pipe, he said. It is further on, said I, but observe the white web work which gleams from the cavern walls. He turned to me and looked into my eyes with two filmy orbs that distilled the ruminum of intoxication. He, here I knocked off the bottle of a wine, which I drew from a long row of its fellow that lay upon the mold. Drink, I said, and presented him the wine. He raised it to his lips with a leer. He paused, nodded to me familiarly with his jingling bells jingling. I drink, he said, to the buried that repose around us, and I to your long life. At the most remote end of the crypt there appeared a less spacious area. Proceed, I said, herein lies the Amontillado as her lechis. He is an ignoramus, interrupted my friend as he stepped unsteadily forward while I followed immediately at his heels. In an instant he had reached the extremity of the niche and finding his progress arrested by the rock, stood stupidly bewildered. A moment more, and I had him fettered to the granite. In its surface were two iron staples. From one of these depended a short change, from the other a padlock. Throwing the links around his waist, it was but short work of a few seconds to secure it, and he was much too astounded to resist. Withdrawing the key, I stepped back from the recesses. Zimantolato! 
ejaculated my friend, not yet recovered from his astonishment. True, I said, the Amontillado. As I said these words, I busied myself among the piles of bones which I have spoken of before. Throwing them aside, I soon uncovered a quantity of building stone and mortar. With these materials and with the aid of my trowel, I began vigorously to wall up the entrance to the niche. A succession of loud and shrill screams bursting suddenly from the throat of the chained form seemed to thrust me back violently. I replied to the yells of him who clamored. I re-echoed. I aided. I surpassed them in volume and in violence. I did this. The clamor grew still. It was now midnight and my task was drawing to a close. There remained but a single stone to be fitted and plastered in. I struggled with its weight. I placed it partially on its destined position. But now there came from the niche a low laugh that erected the hairs upon my head. It was succeeded by a sad voice which I had difficulty recognizing as that of the noble Fortunato. The voice said, <laughs> A very good joke. Yes, an excellent jest. We, we will have many a rich laugh about it at the Piazza. Yes. Yes, over a wine, over, over, oh. The Amontillado, I said. For the love of God, Montressor! Yes, I said, for the love of God. I forced the last stone into its position. I plastered it up. Against the new masonry, I erected the old rampart of bones. For half of a century, no mortal has disturbed them. Rest in peace.